Alright you tube it is Mr. Mean coming at you this Sunday night at 8.31 on January 10th, January, February, February 10th, 2019, snowing like crazy outside, but it's beautiful. We've been watching cars slide down the hill, it's a lot of fun, uh, probably not for them, but for us it's hilarious. It's horrible. We shouldn't laugh at them. But yeah, they've they've come by and plow the road. So hopefully I'll be able to go to work tomorrow. Hmm. We'll see. Anyway, let's get some housekeeping out of the way. First and foremost, a big shout out to Shotgun Machete, who just joined the channel. Thank you, sir or ma'am, for signing up and uh, following Mr. Mean. It means a lot. Please like and subscribe. Let your friends know. Pass it along. Hopefully everybody will enjoy the meanness. Uh, I'm also on Discord. You can follow me on Discord. I post all my videos up on Discord. Um, I, uh, For those that are new to the channel, I don't do Patreon. I do Zelly. Uh, put links in the notes in the, in the doobly-doo down below. Uh, Zelly.com. It's a, it's a, a payment thing, kind of like PayPal, but uh, most banks are on board with it. And it's in your, if you have a smartphone and you have the app installed for your bank, there's usually a Zelly in there and you can just create an account for free and, and you can send me a donation. Uh, all the money goes back into the channel to pay for cool things like tonight's video review um, and thoughts of the game. Uh, my reviews are loosey goosey. I've had a couple people. I read all the comments on all my videos. So, as always, like and subscribe. Hit the bell to be dinged when I dong. <laughs> um, but really, uh, liking and subscribing helps out a lot um, because it, it shows me that what I'm doing means something to people and they enjoy it. It's my little slice of the web and my little take on the RPG industry and things that are happening right now and the games that I'm buying just to give you an idea of whether or not you should buy it. So if you think about it, I'm doing you a service because I'm telling you whether or not it's a good game or not. Now, that being said, you may think it's a great game and I may say it's a pile of shite. Um, that happens sometimes. Uh, opinions are like assholes. We've all got one. I've just been brazen enough to put it up on the web and, and shove it down your throat, and I hope you enjoy it. That didn't come out right, did it? Anyway, tonight's video du jour. Scum and villainy. What can I say? This is a Powered by the Apocalypse offshoot. It's actually produced by Evil Hat Productions. Uh, it is a Forged in the Dark byproduct. Um, uh, Blades in the Dark is a really cool game that I don't own, and I haven't got a chance to uh, play it yet. I was going to play it in Beaumont, Texas. My good friend Joshua was going to run it, um, but it never happened. It never came to fruition, and I'm really bummed about it because I was really jonesing on it. The mechanics of the game sounded really cool. Well, some enterprising people got together and they reached out to Evil Hat and got them to produce this. I don't believe that this was a product of Kickstarter. I think this was a uh, this was uh, just something that they came together and they did it. Um, I bought mine off of Amazon. I'll put links down in the doobly doo uh, for Amazon and Evil Hat Productions uh, website. You can buy it directly from them, or you can buy it through Amazon. Um, as far as PDFs go, what you see on the screen is the um, this is the uh, basically the download that they have it's all the downloads in one so it's all the action sheets uh, for those that don't know this is a somewhat loosely based on powered by the apocalypse or more commonly uh, a lot of people understand dungeon world um which blades in the dark is kind of a riff of of that um this game is scum and villainy and it's obviously a sci-fi game um forged in the dark role-playing game astras Isamvik and john le bouf little um Strass is really cool. She's a young lady, if, if I believe I've got the names right. Uh, she is a GM. If you go on YouTube, uh, you can see some of the Let's Play videos where they play out a small campaign with her and one of the designers, which may be John LaBeouf, I'm not sure, um, and then two other young ladies. So it's a player character group of three with a GM. Um, and you can see how the mechanics work. And they do a great job of kind of explaining things as they go along. And... Um, <laughs> It, it caught me, um, and my buddy Joshua had turned me on to it, and, and I went on Amazon, and the price was right, so I picked it up, and I'm, I'm very happy I got it. Um, I love the layout of the book. Um, 
the PDF that's on the screen right now that you can see, that is just the PDF of all the files that you'll need to run the game. But it is a freebie. You can download it off of uh, uh, Evil Hat's website. Um, and I'm sure if you do a Google search, it'll, it may be up on some other places. Um, this game is a whopping. It's, I mean, it's pretty condensed. 360 pages. It includes a full index and a table of contents. Um, I don't know about the PDF version because I don't have it. Um, I may reach out to uh, Evil Hat and see if there's any chance that since I have proof of purchase from Amazon if I can get a copy of the PDF because that would be nice to have but uh, so the credits are John Lebouf Little who is the art director a bounty hunter and game designer Strass Asimovic uh, is the game designer layout graphic design and space scoundrel uh, Karen Twelve's lead editor Galactic Wayfinder Bryant Stone, Quick Start Editor and Obsessed Herboticist. I don't know what that means. It's a big word. Uh, and Rita Tatum is the indexer. And there's a bunch of artists. Uh, the art in here is fantastic. Um, Sean Nittner uh, was the project manager, intergalactic negotiator, and star dancer pilot. Uh, Carrie Harris is the marketing manager. Fred Hicks, president of Evil Hat. And planetary overmind. I think that is awesome. I've on two occasions I've met Mr. Fred Hicks, and he is an awesome guy. So it's really cool. Chris Hannerhan, who I've also had the pleasure of meeting and being in his game store in Oakland, California, is the business development guy behind it. I didn't even see his name in here. So that's uber awesome, cool. I don't know if Chris remembers me, but I used to go into the store with Brian Isaacoff all the time. Um, and it's based on Blades in the Dark by John Harper. Visit the website for character sheets and other game materials, www.offguardgames.com forward slash scum and villainy. Disclaimer, website is not live. Um, there's a placeholder there for the name. That's it. The web domain has not been purchased um, or it's available for purchase according to the website, but it's not actually hot. Um, so go to Evil Hat uh, Games and, and look at it there. Um, Evil Hat Productions, I'm sorry. So what are you getting here? You get a complete game. Nothing else you need to buy. Layout is fantastic. Kudos to everybody who designed it. The art is black and white. Um, it is clear and concise and totally sets the theme. If you're a fan of Mind Jammer, if you're a fan of Star Wars, if you're a fan of White Star, this is something you probably want to add to your library. Um, the rules are... A little more in depth than say white star not nearly as difficult as uh fantasy flights star wars and you don't need any funky dice um i'm not a fan of d6 games that being said i love dungeon world i love dragon age i love fantasy age i love modern age all d6 games uh, it's just something about the dice mechanic that doesn't grab me for a lot of d6 games like shadowrun and champions not a fan of them I just great worlds, fantastic games, just not my cup of tea. This one grabbed me. Um, you're rolling a bunch of dice, probably around two to six dice on average, uh, maybe a little less, maybe a little more, somewhere in there, but two to six on average. Um, when you get bonuses or setbacks, it's dice. So a positive die will give you an extra die to roll, a negative modifier will take a dice away. Um, you're looking for sixes, they, they deviate from like Dungeon World or Apocalypse Engine where it's just 2d6 and you're looking for uh, a 10 or better as an ultimate success and then a 7 through 9 as a partial success where the GM gets to add something and there's a risk um, and then you know 1 to 6 is an outright failure and the GM gets to do bad things to you. Well it's kind of the same way but it's a different scale. You roll multiple d6s, you're, you're looking for 6s and then um, Every six you get is this, and you take the highest die, um, which is awesome, but it's also bad because if you roll all fours, eh. so you get you get a partial success with a complication. Um, if you roll a one through a three, one two or three, then it's the GM's call, and they can do horrible nasty things to you. Um, but they have a neat mechanic in here, so. Uh, uh, you roll several at once. So Scum and Villainy uses six-sided dice. You roll several at once and read the single highest result. 
So obviously rolling more dice is great, but usually on a minimum you're going to roll two. But even on a one, you got a 50-50 shot. Right, I mean, you know, one to three is a, is a straight up failure. Four, five, four and five is a success with a drawback, and then a six is a, a straight up success. So, uh, so reading here the mechanic, it says the highest die. Uh, if the highest die is a six, it's a full success. Things go well. If you roll more than one six, it's a critical success. You gain some additional advantage. So there is benefit to adding more dice in there if you can. Um, if the highest die is a four or a five, that's a partial success. You do what you were trying to do, but there are consequences. Trouble, harm, reduced effort, etc. If the highest die is a one through a three, it's a bad outcome. Things go poorly, you likely don't achieve your goal, and you suffer complications too. If you ever need to roll but you have zero or negative dice, roll two dice and take the single lowest result. You can't roll a critical when you have zero dice. And then it goes on to explain from there. Um, you use a trait like so to create a dice pool. You use a trait like scramble or your prowess, your ship's crew quality, or the wealth of the system you're in, and take di dice equal to its rating. You'll usually end up with one to four dice. Even one die is pretty good, a 50% chance, some sort of success. The most common traits you'll use are action ratings. A player might roll dice for their scrap. Scrap action rating when they fight an enemy, for example. And so they give you a bunch of different um, examples. There's an action roll, downtime rolls, engagement roll, fortune roll, resistance roll. So what's cool about this is this falls in line with like Dungeon World and Apocalypse Engine and Blades in the Dark and um, uh, the superhero one that escapes my mind right now. It's up on the shelf there. I'm not sure if I can see it. Um, but it's it's a narrative based game. You're you're going to the GM is going to describe a scene, they're going to give you some options, and then you're going to dictate what you do. Um, and what's neat about these type of games is you have as a player, you have a lot of agency on what happens and how it happens. And through creative use, and I highly highly recommend. Go watch the Scum and Villainy YouTube uh, channel uh, with the creators because they really, the adventure was made out in such a way that a lot of different dice rolls happen. They explain everything really well. Um, and it's by the creators. Who knows the game better? So lots of cool stuff. Um, like I said, not sure if it was a Kickstarter. It might have been a Kickstarter. I don't know. Um, I never saw anything on it. I didn't go look on Quick, uh, Kickstarter. But like I said, I picked it up on Amazon for, I think, $32. It retails for $35. Um, it is glued and stitched binding, if you can see that. Um, I will say that I've been vigorously reading it, and my pages are ripping a little bit. Um, I don't think they're going to come out, but I don't know how well the camera is going to pick that. But you can see the discoloration right there, and the pages look like they, they might be ripping out. So... Um, not sure if they're going to actually fall out. I don't think so. I think it's going to hold up pretty good. And, it, and if it does, I'll contact Amazon and they'll send me another one. It's, uh, it's pretty, they're pretty good about that. So um, I, want, I wanted to have the book here. There's also an option here for uh, The Devil's Bargain, which is an option where if you don't think you're going to succeed or if you fail, the GM has an option to offer you The Devil's Bargain. And it's it's basically like rolling a four or five. You you, you get what you want, but you got to give the GM something, or it puts you into a a uh, situation that may not be as advantageous as you'd like. Um, but in a way, that's a good thing because it furthers the story, it advances the narrative, and that's what these type of games are all about. You're sitting around a table, chucking some dice, and you're telling a story. And I find that these games, even Fantasy Flights, uh, Genesis, and Star Wars, the dice really help move the story. And um, I like that about Scum, Scum and Villainy. Now, I haven't got to play it, but I've watched a couple of, you know, play videos on YouTube. And, I, and I've, I've run Dungeon World quite a bit. Um, and so I, I definitely have a, a thick feel for these games, and I, I really like them. Um, it, this I'm glad this is in my co uh, collection. So let's uh, we're going to set the book aside, and we we've seen that we have it, and that, that's good. Let's let's look at the PDF. So we have character creation, and if you've played any Powered by the Apocalypse or Dungeon World, it 
pretty much follows the same thing. Um, you're gonna have a, you're gonna you know you're gonna choose a ship and a crew. You're gonna choose a playbook. Your playbook is your character class. Uh, you're gonna choose a special ability. That's gonna be something on the playbook that only your class is really good at. You're gonna choose a heritage, you, uh, which is obviously part of your background where you come from. Choose a background. Uh, assign action dots. These are what are gonna dictate how many dice you get to roll. Um, there's four additional action points. No action may begin with a rating higher than two. After character creation, action ratings may advance up to three. So choose one friend and one rival. Um, let's get back to the PDF. I'm actually in OBS right now. So there we go. Let's make this big. And hopefully it doesn't change in OBS. Eh, it goes small, but you guys can probably see it. Um, so you, you choose your background. You, you assign your dots. You choose a friend and one rival. Choose your vice. You, you have to pick something that's bad. Record your name, alias, and your look. And, of course, here's um, a whole bunch of names, which is cool. Family names, aliases, look. Um, the cool thing is there's rules in here for aliens. Zeno, right there, baby. Um, review your details. Here's your actions. Attune, command, consort, doctor, hack, helm, rig, scramble, scrap, skulk, study, and sway exactly what they sound like um this is the character sheet this is the meat and potatoes of the game um one of the neat things that this game does is it does the action wheel or the action clock i forgot exactly what they call it i'm not going to look it up uh, you guys can can get the book and uh correct me uh, i believe it's the the action wheel or the action clock um but what this is is you need a you know obviously this is uh six pies um you need successes um, and so the GM, when there's a dramatic event, one of the things the GM can do is you need like multiple successes, like, uh, the patrol is coming and you're trying to hack into a, um, you know, a cargo bay and the patrol is going to walk around that corner at any minute. The GM can break out a clock and de de depending on how difficult it is or how easy it is, well, that's how many slices of a pie it'll have. Sometimes it might be as many as two or four, uh, or as low as two or four, or maybe it'll be three. Um, it all depends. And then if it's more difficult, it's going to be higher, you know, 8 or 10. And then what happens is as you accumulate successes, you get to tick off those, you color in those little pies. And there's a recovery, get, tr get treatment and downtime to fill in your healing clock. So it's a clock. Um, and so in this case, this is something a little bit different, but it's still part of the same mechanic where the GM is setting stress. And, um, and that's, that's a very important thing in this game is that the, the stress. So here's the mechanic. And so we, we know here's our basic generic stuff that we fill in. We fill in how many stress we start with, harm and everything goes there, how much armor you have, um, how many credits and how much stash you have. You never have more than four creds. I believe the creds are like street creds. Um, then you get some options down here, planning and load, gather info. Uh, but the mechanic, here's the, the gearhead and a hacker. So this is a dual role. So you can either lean towards a hacker or a physical mechanic that fixes and or breaks things. And you get a bunch of different options here. So here's your, you get two dots in rig, one in study, and then you get to add things in here. Uh, you can push yourself for bonus dice. You can assist to take one stress. That's another thing. Stress is very important in this game. Uh, when you take enough stress, you take a trauma. You take enough trauma, you can basically die. Um, uh, although they recommend that you don't go out of your way to kill your characters. And of course, a good, you know, once you're done with whatever the work is, uh, whether it's, you know, assassinating somebody, robbing somebody, moving cargo from point A to point B or whatever it may be, uh, then you have downtime and there's full mechanics in there for that. But what's neat is each one of these character classes gets these special abilities. So you get with tinkering and it tells you what you get. And then you get these special abilities, which you'll choose some. You get to make some choices here. So very much Dungeon World or Powered by the Apocalypse. It's all about choices. As you make playbook advances, you color those little tick marks in and you get to choose more things. So if you want to make a hacker, you start off with the hacking ability. And you can expend your special armor to resist the consequences of hacking or to push yourself when hacking or gathering info electronically. So it's all about hacking. So, you know, and then the next class is the muscle. Now, what's neat is the character sheet didn't change. Only this part changed, but it's not an a uber super special PDF. It's just this is all the same, and it just, it just, this is the only part that changed in this part down here. 
So uh, the muscle, this is your combat guy. And, you know, obviously the, you get some choices you get to make. Um, the mystic, this is what's cool is there is the way. Uh, gambits are um, like plus one forward in the game. And you can spend gambits to uh, to get successes and stuff instead of paying stress. You can also pay stress to get a, to get a success. Um, so it just depends. But remember, when you fill up when you fill up that stress, you're gonna take a trauma, and trauma can put you out of the game. So and stress, I believe, if I read the rules correctly, also makes things that you try to do more difficult. So you got your mystic, and the, you got some various powers. So if you wanted to run this as a Star Wars knockoff. You totally could. Uh, I've seen several threads where people have hacked Dungeon World uh, to make it a Star Wars game. Now you don't have to. You've got it right here. Here is your, you know, the Force right here. So, very cool. Uh, the pilot, obviously your Han Solo, if you know you want to put it in Star Wars terms. Uh, the Scoundrel, Han Solo again. I think Han Solo would be more of a Scoundrel and Pilot second. Uh, speaker, that's your face of the group. Stitch, that's your doctor, your medic. And then these are all, right? Yeah. These are all uh, different things that you can do. Muscle items, mechanic. It's, these are all the items that you can pick from when you're making your character. Your crew creation. Because not only are you an individual character, you're also a member of the crew. And you have a ship. And you get this ship. There's no, you owe somebody for the, for the ship or whatever. It's your ship. And you as a group have to decide what kind of ship you have. Now, as currently, as of this printing of the book, there's only three ships. There's like, kind of like a, a fighter cargo, or a fighter ship uh, with a small crew. Basically for like bounty hunters or mercenaries. There's a cargo hauler. And then there's just a general purpose uh, ship. Um, they all look very cool, and we'll, we'll go over them here in a second. We'll get to see some some basic black and white art. So the Star Dancer is your smuggler and block blockade runner. The Cerebus is extraction. That's your merc ship. And then the Fire Drake, rebels and criminals looking to protect the downtrodden and fight the hegemon, hege, hegemony. Uh, hegemony. Uh, they're, they're basically the hegemony is the empire. They're the bad guys, what are the galactic concord, whatever you want to call them. They're the bad guys. Choose a reputation, customize your ship. Each ship has different slots, and you can do different things with them. The most versatile, I think, is the Star Dancer. Um, but, you know, if you wanted to be a more militaristic game, you'd choose, obviously, the Cerebus or maybe even the Fire Drake. But you'll see the images for the ships are super cool. The art in the book, uh, there's not much art in this PDF, but the art in the book is fantastic. It's all black and white. Very concise, very consistent, um, and they've done a great job with it. So kudos to these guys. So favorite contact, update your ship info because you, you're going to make choices when you go through this and it's going to affect the outcome of your ship uh modules and upgrades this is the up the, all the stuff for the ship uh there's the three ships so there's the star dancer the cerebus and the uh what was the third uh the fire drake so and this tells you a little bit about each ship it helps you fill in your ship sheets um and then there's the actual ship sheet so it comes with a jump drive um, and then you can add afterburners and you have two more slots and then you have these slots for engines and stuff and they take up everything takes up compartments and spaces so it's very well thought out you're going to have a ship that's going to be unique to you there's only a couple of choices but no two ships are going to be exactly the same and that's kind of neat um so yeah really well done your crew xp you get when you get to mark xp for what at the end of each mission because again this is a game where you're taking a job um, and you're going to go out and do that job. Everything revolves around the job, and that could be escorting personnel, moving cargo, um, you know, protecting a convoy, depending on the type of ship you have. So there's a lot of different options. Uh, the game is just really wide open what you want to play, but it mainly focuses on, like, the job, and the job can be any of those things I mentioned. But most likely, you know, it's something that your crew excels at. So if you're a mercenary crew, it's going to be, you know, protecting a a convoy or protecting a person or shuttling a person to somewhere you know if you're a smuggler it's going to be about sneaking stuff in or sneaking stuff out so it's it's just it they keep it ambiguous but yet detailed if that makes sense and i like that you know it's it's left up to the gm to come up with an, an option and the players to fill it in and that's really the gm gives you a framework the players build the meat and i like that 
So making it yours, customize your starting positions, suit your own crew. What does the alpha key do? You know, it should be something big, perhaps a key component or making an opening making or opening jump gates or a powerful program that can hack guild systems think about what you want your story to be about and how gaining such a thing might impact the sector so on and so forth one of the cool things that i like about these powered by the apocalypse games um, and those that don't know it the reason we call them a power powered by the apocalypse games is because it was the first game that went to this narrative storytelling with very little dice rolls that's not to say you don't roll a lot of dice because I've, I've run Dungeon World where we're heavy on combat and we rolled a lot of dice and we were light on stories and then the next session was all story and very few dice rolls. Just like any tabletop RPG, the dice are just there to randomize the events. Um, but what's cool is games like this, the players are their own worst enemy. I've seen it. I've, I've run Fantasy Flights uh, uh, into the uh, uh, edge of the Empire and the players come up with some of the worst, devious things more than I ever could. Scum and Villainy is, you watch that that live play of these guys, the designers playing the game, and the players, man, they, they shoot themselves in the foot consistently, consistently. And why? Because it drives the story forward. We all have negative things in our life, so we, we, and we, we project that into the role-playing game, and it becomes fun, and maybe it's not so horrible or whatever. And that's what's cool about games like this that are powered by the apocalypse. It's narrative. You're telling a story. You, nobody wants a story where you swoop in, you kill all the bad guys, and you get out, and you're a hero, and they throw a ticker tape parade for you. That's not fun. You gotta get captured. You gotta have some damage. You gotta, you know, things gotta blow up, and you gotta escape by the skin of your teeth, or maybe you don't escape, you know, and and all those things. The players help drive all that narrative story uh, momentum, and it's just games like this just make it super cool. Um, I'm a big fan of it. Here's the Cerebus, bounty hunters and extraction specialists. So I can see. The, the, obviously the images aren't to scale to each other But you can see this is a very sleek Designed ship um, It has a jump drive The other ship did not have a jump drive So long range scanners Because the whole point of the, these guys of Bounty hunters and extraction specialists Is to go find people or find things And so they're, they're more on the sensors And the weapons and engine Whereas the other one's more on cargo space And, and you know being a catch all ship So again starting situation for the Cerebus and a bunch of different information and your jobs um, and then there's the uh, fire drake which is uh, rebels and hegemonic criminals so these guys are the bad guys they're the they're, they're the criminals they're the guys on the run from the law so if that's the kind of game that inspires you or sounds intriguing that you want to be on the run and you're looking over excuse me you're looking over your shoulder this is the ship you want to take because it's going to help facilitate facilitate that so and you know like i said each ship is different and unique so a whole bunch of different things of course the di different jobs that you can start off with so it's uh it's pretty cool uh just like a lot of the other games there's uh there's all these different um factions in the game and they give them to you you free to create your own um, uncharted worlds um is a great uh sci-fi version of uh well it's a sci-fi version of you know built by the apocalypse and it's a great game i really enjoy it uh this one's a little more detailed and slightly different um they give you a little more um background information and a little more um meat to grab onto whereas uncharted worlds just kind of is an open framework and it's left for you to fill it in there's not a whole lot there still a great game i did a review on it go back in the archive and check it out i'm hoping to get uh mr gomes on the channel and do an interview with him we just our schedules haven't been lining up uh but yeah this and if the guys from scum and villainy want to come on the channel and do an interview with me that would be awesome so if anybody out there watches this and knows those guys tell them to get in touch with me i'd love to have them on the channel and and talk to them because man this this game has got me grabbed um uh, so here's a system tells you, you know, it's one of the areas, the notables, uh, Iota, Breck. Here's your factions. This is what I really like about this. When you do a job, there's going to be positives and negatives, and you're going to, you may do a job for the uh, against the 51st Legion. So you're gonna you're going to get a negative, but you did a job with them, but 
it's also maybe something else is going to go positive. So this is a way for the GM and the players to keep track of that. And you're going to start with positives and negatives in, in some of these groups. Um, and, and there's instructions on how to fill it out. The rules reference, a three-page, I mean, this is... I mean, this is perfect for the game because, like, I've I've never got to play this, so this is something that's going to help me. And it tells you everything. Uh, plus one die if you spend a gambit can only spend one per roll. But you know, hey, if you you start the game with, I believe it's three gambit, um, and then I think your ship also has some gambits as well. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool. You know, one die per action dot. You know, and you're going to look at your character sheet and figure out what it is you're trying to do, and you're going to look at the dots. The little triangle tick marks next to each one. Uh, plus one, if you push yourself, you take two stress, though. Or you accept the devil's bargain. So you can ignore the stress, take the devil's bargain. But again, not going to be something that's super beneficial to you or super hurtful. But it's going to be. It's not going to be all roses and sunshine. There's going to be some negatives to it. So I like that. It gives, it gives the GM a little influence over the game although the gm has plenty of influence over the game but the players are telling a story from their point of view and the gm is there to facilitate that story and with the devil's bargain it gives the gm a little bit more input and you can throw in as many devil's bargains as you want or as little as you want the players may even ask you for it i mean there's one scene i think in the the second video on the youtube channel where one of the players actually ask her for a devil's bargain so I mean, that's really cool that the player's like, man, I got nothing. We need to make this. You got a devil's bargain for me because I'm willing to accept pretty much anything to make this happen. And the GM, she had one ready for them. So that was awesome. Uh, and it just made for really good storytelling. So, you know, as you're running the course of your, I know for me, I would have some three by five cards or whatever, some note paper. And de depending on what the mission was, I would have devil's bargains that kind of work around that mission you know, in a positive and a negative way that I could lead up and kind of string the heroes along in the direction that I wanted them to go. So it's always a good thing to have some options there. So teamwork and then your, your basic actions. <clears throat> and these are basically the skills in the game, so to speak. So you have three different types of environments. You have controlled, which is where the player is basically in control. They, they're, they've got to pick a lock uh, on a safe that they stole and the safe doesn't have any transmitting devices in it, and it's in the hold of their ship, and they're floating in space. Nobody knows they're there. That's totally controlled by the players. Pretty much you just narrate it. The only reason they would have to roll is to actually pick the lock. But once they got the lock picked, there would be no other complications. Risky, same situation, but the safe maybe has a transponder on it, and someone is looking for it, and uh, you're getting pings that someone's out there searching for it. So the you're a little bit desperate. There's a risk involved, and perhaps when you open the safe, if you if you don't get a six and bypass the security, you know if you roll a four or five as your highest die, you you crack the safe. But unfortunately, you set off that transponder, and now it's actively pinging, and people are going to find it in a certain amount of time. Desperate, you rolled a one, two, or three when you were trying to hack that safe, and now you've got hegemony, hegemony, however you say it, hegemony, hegemony ships inbound they've got you they know it's you they've got your ship's transponder and they're going to come in guns blazing and you've got to roll so i mean that's pretty much to me those are controlled risky and desperate um uh page two of the reference sheet your downtime this is payoff and upkeep you complete your job you get paid for it and you got to pay for upkeep and everything and it gives you the rules heat after a job uh, or conflict the crew takes heat uh, in the system the job took place in. And the heat is a cool mechanic because it's literally what it sounds like. Uh, are people looking for you? Uh, you know, did you make a ruckus? Did you blow up the safe instead of, you know, electronically bypassing it? Did you blow it up inside the Hegemony's, you know, payroll office? You, you know, so it depends on how you completed the mission and how much attention you brought to yourself and some other factors. And they go into explaining it there. Um, downtime is just that it's downtime and it, they give you some options you can indulge in your vice you can craft you can acquire assets and things like that and then rules reference this is the cool part right here GM principles GM goals these are things devil's bargain and they give you a list of um, some possible devil's bargains GM actions 
uh, things that the GM can do uh, when you're in the midst of telling a story. I love this. Family names continued from the core book, aliases, look, just some extra information. Now, these may be exactly the same that's in the core book. I'm not sure, but it's still nice to have them as a quick reference. I would set up my GM screen, and I would, I would this would definitely be a page that's in there. Uh, Procyon uh, system notables like I said they give you some background on the universe and, and here's your information uh, and some uh, initial people flashbacks are a big thing in the game and there's rules for how to do flashbacks your fortune roll your consequences all your information is there here's the jobs this is a, a basically a handful of dice to use the results to help you guide your choices so as a GM you're, you're stuck you don't have an idea of what tonight's session is going to be roll a couple dice it's just it's basically an adventure generator and i think that's awesome um and that's that's it so that is everything you need you know that's a base outline for um scum and villainy and i'm gonna switch back over to my camera so i can see my furry face um so that's scum and villainy guys i think if you're into narrative based games if you're a huge fan of dungeon world or uncharted worlds um and you like sci-fi you like fantasy you like aliens and robots um and you but you want a narrative game and maybe you're not really down for the funky dice that are in star wars uh fantasy flights game whether it be genesis uh their generic role-playing system um or you know the star wars franchise maybe it's not your cup of tea maybe you want to do firefly you got it right here man you can easily do firefly in this um you could do Space 1999 if you're a grognard like me and you remember Space 1999. This would totally rock it. Um, so, uh, Thunderbirds. You could do Thunderbirds in this. I mean, you know, if, if that's your cup of tea. Uh, it's it's just really cool. Um, like I said, the art. Um, I'm going to try and pull up a... Yeah, here's a nice spread of the art. Put it right there. Get my meat paws out of the way. That's the tile, the style of art that's in the book. Um, it's all black and white line drawing. It's very, it's very clear and concise. Very crisp art. Um, it's just, it's really well done. Um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of it. I, uh, I can wholly recommend this game, even though I haven't played it. I've, like I said, I've watched, I watched the whole Scum and Villainy youtube uh presentation of the game and it was fantastic i hope they play more because i'm definitely going to watch it um i think this is worth the 35 dollars 36 dollars that they're charging for it of course you can get on amazon for a little bit cheaper i'll put links down in the doobly-doo like i said i was going to do and uh guys gals that's that's scum and villainy man if you have any questions or concerns uh whatever you want to get on discord and maybe play a game hit me up man i'm totally down I'll, I'll run something for for as little as two people we can get we can get two people to play we can totally run it and make it happen um we can even do fantasy ground i'm sure there's a, someone's made a hack for fantasy ground um or it's it wouldn't be hard to uh to to make it work in fantasy ground um but yeah, that's uh, that's my thoughts on Scum and Villainy. Uh, let me know if you agree, you disagree, you like it, you don't like it. Have you played it? Um, is it in your gaming library right now? Are you looking to get a group together? Let me know. Um, I'd be interested to see. So as always, Mr. Mean says, peace and hair grease. And remember, be nice. <laughs>